that's the way. Now, you know, when uh, when uh, I became a kind of a guru or whatever, and people started uh, paying attention to my to my views, uh, uh, which really, I guess, happened after the Karakadi uh, is just uh, uh, leaving the European exchange rate mechanism, I, I began to have the ability to affect the market, which then created problems for me, which I could in the end really only solve by getting out of the market. I wonder if we could uh, think a little bit about the very long-term consequences of reflexivity because it, it seems to me that over the long term, societies do learn from their direct disastrous mistakes. And that is a form of reflexivity that modifies the ideology. I think, for instance, of the fact that uh, the free markets are pretty well established around the world today. That's been a, it's been a marvelous lesson that the world has learned. Mm -hmm. There's hope in, in that, don't you agree? Yes, I, I think that uh, the markets are functioning better with them being, being uh, uh, let's say, uh, less, uh, uh, less interfered with. Yes. But uh, I still expect that uh, you will have uh, disruptions in the market, discontinuities, because of the basic uncertainty built in, in, into the market. Uh, and um, and I'm kind of looking for the, for that for the, where that may come come from. Uh, and while you really have um, increasingly sophisticated management of the of the, uh, the, the financial uh, uh, system. Uh, uh, that sophistication comes from a better understanding of the reflexive connections. So while you still have uh, sort of the the uh, classical economic theory underlying uh, uh, the um, sort of being uh, the, the underlying theory, the the behavior of the of the, uh, the financial authorities actually is guided by a a, a greater uh, uh, understanding of the reflexive connection between markets and... I'm oh, just using markets as an example. Of well, it's a good example of how it's societies learn. Yeah, it's a good example. Yeah. Because, I, I, I mean, I think that, for instance, uh, Greenspan uh, was uh, really a master of, of um, understanding what its various connections. And dealing with uncertainty. And dealing with uncertainty, yes. And, and actually, you know, the, 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 um, the, the, the decision of the, of, of the Fed uh, currently uh, to indicate that they are very reluctant to raise interest rates because they expect uh, a slowdown uh, in, uh, coming from the housing market. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they're trying to right. anticipate it, right. you see. Right. I think it's very far-sighted. Yeah. Uh, so so the, there is a very definite learning <coughs> process. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's take one back there and then Mark. Your uh, vision of the open society is clearly an evolution of your reflexive uh, thinking. And, uh, and an evolution in that, as you just mentioned with Karl Popper and your evolution. What happens to ideas like that in terms of reflexivity when they move from the relatively modest scale of what you've done with open society funds to government investment in the same values? I mean, what, 
that something seems to go terribly wrong with the scale. And I'm just interested in your reflexive theory on what happens when, say, AID or World Bank does the same thing or t says they're doing the same thing as what you've tried to do in the Open Society Fund. What, what happens with the scale and what is that teaching you? I'm also sort of getting more ambitious, uh, carried away by my success up, up to that point. And who knows when I'm going to uh, run into uh, some, and already I have uh, from time to time, uh, you know, uh, gone a little too far in some directions. So uh, there, there's always this, this, um, uh, problem of if you if you hit on a an idea that seems to work then you get carried away and you take it too far so and I speak from personal experience um, now there is a, a a different problem with um, with the activities of the foundation as compared to the official authorities. And the, the difference is that the, that the people in the foundation actually care about the, the issues in which they are involved. And they really want to achieve, you know, what, they, what their objective is, whatever that may be. Whereas, uh, the organizations, they may have a certain mission when they are formed, but then they, they, they are primarily concerned with self-preservation. And, and the, the concerns that are supposed to guide them uh, take second place. And that's a, that's a generalization that I think <coughs> applies. Now, of course, we also, as we become an organization, uh, are subject to the same thing. You know, one of the big problems we faced as a foundation was to recognize that we are a bureaucracy. Uh, and I now recognize that we are a bureaucracy and, and act like a bureaucracy. Uh, uh, but it took some time to, to realize that we are not exempt <coughs> from these limitations uh, uh, of, of, of bureaucracy. And then, when it comes to international organizations, you have another level of, of, of problems, uh, uh, which is that they are associations of, of, of states. And states uh, have uh, interests, but not no principle. That was an instance where the intervention of the, uh, of the New York Fed was very successful. It, it, it basically uh, uh, led to an orderly winding down of the positions instead of a disorderly uh, default. So uh, um, these problems need to be recognized and dealt with, and that's what central banks are there for. Uh, the uh, the um, breakdown of the DRM was, you know, actually uh, uh, worked in favor of, 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 of Britain. They lost some money in, in uh, abandoning uh, unsustainable exchange rate, but they were actually quite grateful for the efforts I made on their behalf. <laughs> they, 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 was, they were noticeably more tolerant uh, of, of, of my activities than, let's say, the, the Asian countries. <laughs>